Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a small portable power station from Pecron. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, we're lifting up the big piece of styrofoam and we got the portable power supply in this little bag. Looks like a manual and a warranty card. All right, and there's what it looks like. And it has a little baggie attached to it, which has a little snap button. Which you, you can snap it on to stuff so that way you don't lose it. And let's see what's in here. Two items. We have an AC power cord, which as you can see, there's no power brick. So that's always nice. And we have a cigarette lighter to uh, looks like a barrel plug adapter. Okay, looking at the front of the Pecron E300, we have our cigarette lighter port right here. We have the off and on uh, switch for the DC power. And we also have a couple of uh, barrel ports. One is for 24 volts at five amps and one is for 12 volts at five amps. So we have two different sizes. And we also have a USB-C port right here that is 100 watts in and out. So you can charge the unit from this port. Uh, and then we also have a couple of USB-A's that are rated at 18 watts. So those would be the fast charging USB-A's. Uh, and then on the AC side, we have the AC on and off button right here and a couple of AC receptacles. And they are rated at 600 watts maximum. Uh, on the top, we see that there is a phone charging pad right here. Uh, on this side, there is a fan port. On the back is just uh, more information about the, about the portable power station itself. And on this side, we have a light and let's see, a, uh, a barrel plug adapter to charge it from either a solar panel or a cigarette lighter adapter. And then this other side is the AC plug to charge it from your AC wall outlet. The corners are, the corners do have this rubbery feel to them. So it's very, very nice. It feels like the, like if you drop it, it won't just shatter. And then it does have this handle, which makes it nice and easy to pick up. Uh, these are lithium iron phosphate battery cells on the inside. So it's on, it's a little bit heavier than this small of a form factor, but you're looking at 3,500 cycles uh, before you even reach only 80% of its capacity. So you're looking at a very long lifespan of this, of this unit. Uh, let's go ahead and get the measurements to see how big this is. Okay, we're looking at around 10 inches across, uh, about five and a half inches tall, and the depth is a little bit over six and a half inches, and it weighs 11.2 pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the DC side and see what it displays. Okay, right off the bat, it shows that the battery is at 65% and it can hold this, just the DC being on standby for 187 hours. And it also shows that there is zero output um, from the receptacles on the DC side. Now, if we turn on the AC side. Okay, you heard a fan kind of kicked on to test and now the AC side is on. And you can see that it still says 65%, but the, the standby uh, amount of hours has dropped to 11.7. So it does show in real time what the standby consumption will be and how long you can leave this uh, in this in this state with nothing plugged in, but both sides turned on. And now if you just short press the button, it switches between 60 hertz, uh, the amount of hours that it will uh, stay powered, and the voltage of the outputs, so 118 volts. And then if you long press it, it will turn it off. And then this side, if you short press, it does go 19.8 volts, 65%, and it just switches between those two. 19.8 volts, 65%, and you long press and to turn off the whole unit. On this side, if you long press, you get the light, and I'm sure if you short press, it gets brighter, and now it flashes SOS, and then it just goes back to like a medium light, bright light, SOS. And then you long press to turn it off. 
Okay, to go over the specifications of this uh, little portable power station, the capacity of the lithium iron phosphate batteries inside is 288 watt hours. Uh, that's basically 19.2 volts at 15 amp hours. Um, like I said, the battery is a LiPo 4. It will retain its original capacity all the way up to 3,500 cycles. So that could be 10 years, easily. Charging time, this thing can charge from 0 to 80% in 60 minutes. So that is really nice. And it can charge all the way up to 100% in 80 minutes. Uh, it does have a load of protections. It has over voltage, overheat, overload, short circuit, and it does self-recover. Since it's using lithium iron phosphate cells, you do not want to use this in freezing cold temperatures, and you don't want to use it in extremely hot temperatures, like over 110 to 115 degrees. Uh, like I said before, the cigarette lighter adapter, uh, it can do 12 volts at 10 amps. Uh, these two barrel plugs are uh, 55, 25 plugs. This one does 24 volts at 5 amps, and this one does 12 volts at 5 amps. Uh, again, the USB-C, which is a uh, USB-C at 100 watts in and out. And then we have the two USB-As, which are 18 watts. Uh, the AC side, you have two receptacles with a max output of 600 watts. I'm guessing that's 300 watts per receptacle, but we'll go ahead and test to see if we can go over 300 watts and reach that 600 watt max on one. And then the wireless charger does do a max of 15 watts output. And in the documentation, when it comes to the inputs, um, this, the barrel plug adapter for the solar and the cigarette lighter will max out at around 100 watts. And the AC receptacle will max out at 300 watts. Uh, you can use them both together, but you still will only get a max input of 300 watts. So 100 watts from here and 200 watts from the AC side. Another thing I like about this unit is it is UPS. So that means that you can use this as a battery backup source for like a computer, uh, which, will be, which we will be testing here in a little bit. Okay, this small little unit does come with an app as well. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. Uh, it does say in the manual that you need to go to either your Apple or Play Store and download the Pecron app. That's what you need to search for. And then once you get it downloaded, you'll need to register. You need to put in an email and it will send you a code. You put in the code and then you put in your password and you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and put the uh, app on the screen here. And when you finally get all that done, it's going to say add a device. Scan QR code. What? Well, a scan QR code came up. So let me just try that. Okay, the scan QR code does not work on this unit. We'll just say detect nearby devices, allow, turn on Bluetooth. And now it does say one device has been scanned. We'll go ahead and click that. There it is. Uh, I guess we'll put the, press the plus button. We'll select our Wi-Fi, enter our password. Okay. Uh, the unit was added successfully, so we're going to go ahead and hit done. And I guess save. And it shows it there in our list, and it's online. So let's go ahead and select it. It's loading, and, it sh and here's the screen. 65% on the screen, which is exactly what it says on the unit. It shows our inputs and our outputs which you can turn off the AC loads and DC loads from the app, which is nice. You can turn on the LCD screen right there. Uh, we have battery pack details. Okay, that really doesn't tell us much. It looks like it just gives us a percentage. 19 volts, no amps going in, and it's at 19 degrees Celsius. Input output settings. AC charging power is at 100%. No output auto, auto off timer. So that's nice, you can turn off the output in a certain amount of time if you want. And then the AC power, you can charge it at 100% or if you want to charge it over time, you can select the amount of power that goes into the unit. Device manual and system settings. And your system settings are just your device, well, oh, advanced settings. The eco silent mode, which is off. 
no operation automatically reduces the brightness of the screen. Machine screen brightness is at 100%. Uh, the eco mode, silent mode, the machine's AC charging power is set to 50%, and the automatic shutdown timer without output is set to two hours. So if nothing's plugged into it, this unit will automatically shut off after two hours. Okay, so enough about the app. Let's go ahead and start testing this unit. Okay, I went ahead and plugged it in, and you can see that it's ramping up to, uh, and it does, the display on the left side does actually show the input. And we do have an input of a three, almost 300 watts, 293. And I can hear the fan start to blow as soon as it got, it got up to that 280 to 300 range. And it says that it will be done charging in 0.3 hours. So once this is done charging, I'm going to go ahead and do a DC capacity test and an AC capacity test to see what kind of efficiencies we have on both sides of the unit. Okay, so the AC test is complete. Let's see what the capacity is on the AC side. And we are looking at 215 watt hours out of 288. So that would be a 74.6 percentage of capacity on the AC side. So you're looking at losing about 25% of your uh, total watt hours when using just the AC side. And remember, that was a 200 watt test. That's actually pretty, that's a pretty high test. That's like a point, a 0.7 or 0.8 C test. Um, so that 75% will be the lowest that you'll get. Uh, if you're just using it for like a a 50 watt light bulb or something like that, you'll probably get uh, you know, somewhere in the 80% range. So, so I'm gonna let this charge back up and we are going to do a DC, a DC side test to see what our losses are on that side. All right, I just started the DC efficiency test and we're gonna see what kind of capacity we get. It is the cigarette lighter and I am pulling, well, this shows 143 watts. And that equates to 12.5 uh, volts at 10 amps, which this is actually showing 125 watts. So after this is done, we'll see what kind of efficiency we have. Okay, so the DC capacity test is done. So let's go ahead and check out our results. And you can see that we got 256.77 watt hours out of 288 possible watt hours. That gives us an efficiency of almost 89%. So that is very respectable. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I've already charged this back up to you know upper 90s. So we're gonna go ahead and do some, uh, some heavy draws on the DC side. And we're gonna test those AC outlets to see if we can actually pull 500 watts from one outlet and what will happen if we pull too much. Okay, first let's try the DC side. This thing has been known to kind of uh, uh, overpower some ports that I've had before, so we're gonna go ahead and try it to see if it will start it up. All right, here we go. All right. Perfect. It pulled 116 watts out of this port, so that is, uh, you know, if it was 12 volts at 10 amps, that's 120 watts. So we are pulling right at the max of what it can do. So it can, it can do that 120 watts of output on the DC side. Okay, next I have a uh, 500 watt uh, Amazon Basics uh, ceramic heater. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're gonna see if one outlet can do that full 500 watts. All right, it's ramped up to 512. And now it's dropping back down. There we go, 540, 523. And now it's starting to level back out, so it's down to 470. So it does look like uh, it can do 600 watts max, and it can do that out of one outlet. All right, so I've got another 200 watt heater here. Let's go ahead and plug that in and see what happens when I turn that on as well. All right, 600, 635, and it turns off. So that's exactly what it should do. It's an over amperage event and the AC inverter shuts off just like it should. Let's go ahead and turn it off. And if we turn it back on, it resets and it's ready to go. 
Okay, I went ahead and put an oscilloscope on the AC side, and I just wanted to show you the, uh, the pure sine wave that we have flowing right now. So it is pure sine wave and not modified. Okay, and this is going to be testing the UPS function of this Pecron E300. Now it says it's got a UPS, so I should be able to unplug it from the wall, and it will switch over to battery fast enough to keep this laptop on. Now this laptop is like at least 12 years old. The battery is completely dead. So there's no battery power in this laptop whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it, and if the laptop stays on, uh, the UPS function is fast enough to be called a true UPS. So without any ado, let's go ahead and try it. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. Well, it's not fast enough to keep a laptop on when the laptop is completely without battery. All right, so what do I think of the Pecron E300 uh, portable power station? It covers a lot of bases. It's, uh, I like the fact that it has its own app. Um, it's very small, it's very small and portable, which is nice. And with the portability, look at this, I mean, you can carry it with one hand with lithium iron phosphate batteries inside. So that way you're getting um, thousands of cycles. You know, it's rated for 3,500 cycles before it gets a depth of discharge of 80% use of battery. It also, it's proved itself that it can power, you know, 120 watts from the DC side. It can uh, power, uh, you know, well over 500 to 600 watts on the AC side, and it will shut off when you go over that 600 watts, which, which is great. Um, the capacity test was great on the DC side. Uh, the AC side was a little bit lower. It was only like in the mid 70s, but I was pushing a lot of electricity through it. Uh, if we actually did a, you know, a 0.2C test, I'm sure that we would get better results. So the results that we got were probably the base of what we would expect. Um, also, it's just kind of full featured in a small package. I like how it has um, a wireless charger on top and the fact that it can, um, that you can plug it in and use AC devices at the same time, that's a big bonus for something this small. The bummer part is that it does say that it's a UPS system, but it, I would not recommend you using this as a UPS for your laptops or your desktop computers. I think it's more for uh, items that don't need that quick switch over. So uh, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Pecron E300 portable power station, uh, please leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll have a link to this in my description. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye-bye.